Hello? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, one of the current intellectual theories says that the language and the naming is the premier reflection of wisdom. Uh, if this is true, we can all think of why are there so many res in today's agenda? Rethinking, reinventing, relearning. Well, my understanding is that first of all, this recognizes that there are lots of achievements. The things are there, Armenia is there, the language is there, the culture is there, the learning uh, initiatives are there. And of course, it's a quite a positive thing. However, you usually redo, rethink, reinvent, redefine something that you are not quite satisfied with, something you want to improve and to change. This is a quite a big question we all ask to each other silently or not silently. Why are we not that successful as we think we could be? As the two republics, as diaspora, as our Western and Eastern parts, uh, as communities, uh, religious institutions, and so on. Why the stance, the current situation we are in, is not something that we are fully satisfied and something that we actually, much more than this, think needs a big change. Well, talking about reinventing Armenia assumes that one should understand what's the cause of the problem, and much more than this, one should actually uh, propose a solution. Of course, it's an unrealistic um, uh, task to accomplish, specifically when Armenia, in a big sense of it, is at least 3,000 years old, if not 5,000 years old. So in a few minutes to say how to reinvent it, it's something difficult. But let me share with you my thinking. Um, when going through this great exhibition of postcards uh, yesterday of the Armenian life in Ottoman Empire, I recalled, which many of you remember, the words of the Pope of Rome at this very important uh, liturgy that happened at the centennial of the Armenian Genocide with the presence of two Catholicoses of the Armenian Apostolic Church and the Patriarch of the Catholic Church. Uh, many of you will remember the words and the Pope said that the 20th century was marked by the three biggest catastrophes, the Armenian Genocide, Fascism, and Stalinism. Well, we all understand and saluted this statement as a um, re-recognition of the Armenian Genocide by Vatican, which already happened and was restated. But I think the idea is much bigger than this. If you think these three catastrophes, these three crimes, the Armenian Genocide, Fascism and the World War II, and Stalinism, they all have been our catastrophe. They all impacted us. We are not only the victims or the nation which passed through the Armenian Genocide, we are the nation which passed through with the three catastrophes of the 20th century. Per capita, the Soviet Republic of Armenia was the biggest loser of lives during the uh, World War II within the Soviet Union. Stalinism, as well as the genocide and the World War II, took the lives of Armenians, the talents of Armenians, the creative heads of Armenians, and the working hands of Armenians. By the way, this is something that I hope, I don't know it happened, but at least I can't remember of an artistic cultural reflection of an Armenian experience through these three experiences of 20th century. And maybe this is something where we still need to talk about and discuss and reflect because it, is, it does unite our collective past. However, with many things being researched and said, what the three have done, to all the people and including the Armenians, I think it's not only taking lives, it's not only taking genes, it's not only taking wealth, it's not only taking talents, 
It's taking the sense, the right of ownership. As a nation with its all collective parts in Armenia, in diaspora, in all the different communities, because of that experience, we lost the sense, the status, the self-understanding of the owners. I have a feeling, and hopefully all I'm saying is wrong, and um, after this discussion, we'll have a lot of discussions together, but that we are a group of generations, and saying this, I'm saying my parents, myself, hopefully not our kids, of the Armenians who rent Armenia and Armenianness from the history. We are not the owners, and that's the problem. We are the renters. Some of them are good renters and careful. Some of them are bad. Some of them are lawful. Some are not. But the problem is that we don't own what we have. And we don't recognize quite much what we have. And this is an enormous wealth of the Armenian culture. We say a lot of things about ourselves. We say how smart we are, entrepreneurial, hardworking. We very rarely say that we are rich. We rare, very rarely say that we are wealthy. But we are one of the wealthiest nations in the world, along with Chinese, uh, many other Greek, and many other cultures. We are the owners of the biggest wealth. And I think, I'm sure, that being Armenian is being the stakeholder, the owner of that wealth. Be it in Armenia, in Artsakh, in diaspora, I want us to think about ourselves as, yes, me and you are the owners of the Armenian church in Singapore. And this is redefining, reinventing what is uh, Armenia. We have to come back, our generation, and raise the next generation as a generation of owners. Lots of things which are happening, you know, we are sort of having this relationship with this owner from the history of the bigger Armenia that we never met. And we have this some kind of a clumsy gestures, the reverences uh, to this owner, because we don't know how to speak to this person or a group of people. It's not about respect or respect to the history, but it's that we are somewhere in between. We rent our Armenia. We rent our Armenian culture. We rent our Armenian language. We don't own it. All these discussions, which I truly think are baseless about two different languages, one not understanding each other, it's because we can't play own with the language. If we are the owners of the language, come on, it's a blended great language, it's our wealth. One dialect will enrich the other dialect and it will get bigger. The same thing about the culture, you know, it's, Everything we do is a this or other way playing and with the history, which is great, but not creating new pieces, not creating new ideas, not inventing, reinventing everyday Armenia. Why? Because we are not owing it. Because we are renting it and we are not sure if we have the right to, uh, to make these changes. So reinventing Armenia, in my opinion, is re-owning it, is getting the responsibility for it. It's answering the question when your daughter or your son asks you, what is being Armenian? It's saying, well, it's being the owner of that manuscript in Matanadaran, of that uh, island in Venice, of this school in LA, uh, of that great historic building in Moscow. It's being the owner of this great language. It's being the owner of this history. It's being the owner of this recipe of the food. Not just renting it. Not just, you know, trying to touch it carefully and just uh, passing it over. Reinventing Armenia is re-owning Armenia. Well, I don't know how this should happen. I think this should, you know, more and more we, sh we should start believing in this, that we are the owners. And we should definitely raise the generation of owners. And we should understand that as 
those who rent were not capable to keep it. As those who rent, we do not have rights to change it. That's why most of the changes will continue to be artificial, will continue to be half done. With all this discussion, where should I live, which language should I speak, am I Hayastansi, diaspora, and whatever, these are all the signs that it's a psychology of renters. It's my nation, one nation. I'm one of the 10 million owners of this nation. I am the stakeholder. I have the right to own it, to change it. And I'm both Los Angeles, uh, Arev Matahai, Hayastansi, Rusahai, whatever it is. It's my country, my two countries, and my heritage and my culture. If we don't stop this, artificial discussions will never come from the position of the renters to the position of owners. You know, the Anglo-Saxon model uh, proved to be, and uh, some will argue, but is one of the most successive, the successful uh, models of uh, development, nation building, and so on. Why? The core of it is private property, is the psychology of ownership. And today, the problem is that no Armenian in the world owns nothing. You American Armenians do not own America. And again, let me be wrong. The Russian Armenians do not own Russia. The Armenian Armenians do not own Armenia. Hopefully, people in Artsakh, and I'm not Garabakhsi, by the way, I'm Loretzi, own uh, Artsakh, hopefully, and we collectively own it. But let's get back our rights of ownership. Let's reown our culture, our history, our future. Sign off the renter's rights and get back the ownership rights. Maybe this is a way to reinvent Armenia. Thank you.